Dear students, now we are going to discuss unijunction transistor and its characteristics in detail. Let's start with the definition. UJT is a three terminal semiconductor device. The three terminals are emitter, base 1 and base 2. It has only one PN junction. Since it has only one PN junction and three terminals, it is called as unijunction transistor. Okay, so next structure of UJT. It consists of a lightly doped N-type silicon bar into which a heavily doped P-type silicon material is diffused, which is closer to this B2 terminal. So it forms one PN junction. Okay, this is the symbol representation of UJT emitter base 2 and base 1. So here the arrow at an angle towards the junction represents the direction of conventional current from this emitter to base 1. So maximum amount of current is flowing from this emitter to base 1. Hence it is represented towards this base 1 terminal. Okay. So this is the symbol. Okay. That's what given here. The arrow in the emitter represents the direction of conventional emitter current from emitter to base 1. Okay. Next, the equivalent circuit of UJT. Here the diode D represents the PN junction of UJT. The terminals B1 and B2 are represented with its internal resistance values RB1 and RB2. So here, this RB1 is always greater than this RB2 and it is also a variable resistance because it depends on the bias voltage. Okay, so here RB1 depends on the bias voltage. So it is a variable resistor. So next we have to consider the terminal emitter is open. That means there is no current conduction across this diode. So emitter current is equal to zero. Under this condition, these two resistors are connected in series. So here the total interbase resistance is given as RBB is equal to RB1 plus RB2. Okay, so if we are going to apply only this VBB supply voltage between B1 and B2, what will happen? There is a voltage drop across this RB1 as well as RB2. So the voltage drop across this RB1 is very important factor because this voltage is going to reverse bias this diode. So here the terminal is positive, here the terminal is negative. So this VB1 is going to reverse bias this diode. So VB1 is an important parameter here. The voltage drop across this RB1 with this power supply VBB and emitter current as 0. So how are we going to find out this VB1 using voltage division rule? What is voltage division rule? The total voltage multiplied with the resistance across which we are going to find out that voltage divided by the total voltage. So that is what given here with the emitter open. If only the supply voltage VBB is applied between B2 and B1, then there is a voltage drop across the RB1 as well as RB2. The voltage drop across this RB1 is VB1 that is equal to the total supply voltage VBB multiplied with RB1 by RB1 plus RB2. So this is what voltage division rule. Okay. So this ratio is represented as eta. Okay. Eta is equal to RB1 divided by RB1 plus RB2. So this is nothing but the intrinsic standoff ratio. So this factor is important because it is going to define the reverse bias condition for the diode. Okay. So here this ratio should always be in the range of 0.5 to 0.75. This VB1 reverse biases the PN junction and IA is in cutoff condition. Okay. Next operation of UJT. There are three conditions. First one is with emitter terminal open. So that is there is no voltage applied at this emitter terminal. Only VBB is applied between B1 and B2. So what will happen? There is a voltage drop across this RB1 as well as RB2. 
This RB1 voltage drop causes reverse bias to this diode. That is VB1. Okay. So, this provides reverse bias to this diode to make the emitter current is in cutoff region. Due to the minority carriers, there may be some current flow from this B2 to emitter. Okay. So, that is the first condition. So, the next one is if you are going to apply voltage at this emitter terminal, that is positive voltage. So, whenever this emitter voltage exceeds the diode voltage, diode voltage means cut-in voltage. So, here 0.7 volt for silicon material, okay. So, whenever this emitter voltage exceeds this diode voltage and also the BB1 because it provides reverse bias condition. So, it has to exit VD as well as VB1, then the diode starts conducting. It starts conducting means here the emitter terminal is heavily doped with P-type material. So, majority carriers are holes. So, holes are injected into this N-type material. What will happen? This positive is connected with this B2. So, holes are repelled from this B2 to B1. So, B1 is connected with this negative. So, it is going to attract more number of holes from this emitter. So, maximum amount of current is flowing from this emitter to B1. Okay. So, that's why the arrow mark in the symbol is given like this. Okay. Towards this B1. Do you all understand this concept? So, when emitter voltage increases, here the resistance value decreases because the maximum amount of current is flowing from this emitter to base 1. Okay. If this RB1 decreases means then the current is increased regeneratively. That is a large amount of current is flowing from emitter to base 1. Okay. So, when VE increases same time IE is increased regeneratively. That is the unique characteristics of this UJT. So, how long it will increase its value? When a positive voltage is applied to the emitter, the diode becomes forward biased with the condition VE exits VB1 by at least 0 0.7 volt. 0 0.7 means diode cut in voltage, okay. So, at that condition, holes are injected into N-type silicon bar. These holes are repelled by B2 and attracted by B1. This reduces the resistance value and increases the emitter current. Here VE increases the emitter current which in turn reduces the RB1. This causes further increase in IE regeneratively. So this is the unique characteristics of UJT. The peak voltage of the UJT is given as eta into VBB plus VD. Okay. So here this VD is nothing but cut in voltage of diode. Next the third condition when a negative voltage is applied to the emitter. PN junction is reverse biased and the emitter current is cut off that is UJT is in off condition. Okay. So next characteristics of UJT. There are three regions in this IE versus VE characteristics. Cut off region, negative resistance region, saturation region. So when this emitter voltage is less than this peak voltage, the PN junction is reverse biased. There is only a small amount of this emitter current due to the minority carriers. So, here in this cutoff region, it is only due to the minority carriers. So, when this emitter voltage exceeds this peak voltage, the PN junction is forward biased and it starts conducting the current. Okay, that is what given over here. So, why do we have this negative resistance region? So, in this one, it increases the emitter current, decreases the RB1. Okay, since the characteristics is what? VE increases means emitter current is increased regeneratively. At the same time, the base resistance is decreased, thereby decreasing the emitter voltage. So, that's what given here. Here, the emitter current is increased and the emitter voltage is decreased. Due to the relationship, resistor is directly proportional to voltage, okay. When the emitter voltage reaches this value voltage, the UJT is driven into saturation region, okay. 
there are three regions cut off region negative resistance region and saturation region if ve is less than vp the emitter is reverse biased there is a small leakage current due to minority carriers so here it is an off condition the region left of the peak point is known as cut off region if the emitter voltage is greater than this peak voltage the diode is forward biased it increases the emitter current and decreases rb1 thereby decreasing be okay so here this is the relation ie is inversely proportional to rb1 that's why it is called as negative resistance it is decreased means it is increased okay so that is inversely proportional ie increases until it reaches the valley point the region between peak and valley point is known as negative resistance region okay after the valley point the device is driven into saturation region okay next unique characteristics of ujt when ujt is triggered by emitter voltage the emitter current starts increasing regeneratively until it is limited by the same emitter voltage but here we are giving the negative voltage to limit it okay that is called as negative resistance property because of this property ujt is widely used in many applications it can be used in switching circuits it can be used as a ujt relaxation oscillator short tooth generator pulse generator it can also be used in timing and trigger control circuits okay